In this video, I'm going to give you the definition of a Riemann sum. Riemann sums are used to estimate the area under a curve. This is denoted with a pretty complicated formula. The formula is designed to approximate what is going to be called the definite integral. So, so far our antiderivatives have been called um, indefinite integrals. They don't have any bounds on them, but we're going to use a Riemann sum to estimate an integral with bounds. So it'll be an integral from A to B. It's on an interval from A to B of f of x dx. So because we don't know how to take these integrals with bounds quite yet, what we're going to do is approximate them using a formula for Riemann sums. So the formula starts out with a limit as n goes to infinity. n stands for the number of subintervals. So we're going to make a key off to the side here for this pretty complicated formula. First part of our key is key is that n is the number of subintervals. Getting all twisted up before we even get into the formula. So n is the number of subintervals. We want to let it go to infinity. What that means is the more subintervals we have, the better our answer is going to be. So if we could have infinite number, that would give us a perfect approximation. We'd be very close to the correct answer, if not right on the money. So we have n going to infinity. That just tells us the more subintervals, the better. And then the sigma means we're going to take the sum from i equals 1, from the very first subinterval of f of x sub i star. My best way of explaining that is you're plugging in a certain x value. So it's called x sub i star, which means you're going to plug in a specific x, depending upon whether you're doing a left or a right Riemann sum, and you're going to get that y value out. So you're going to get f of that certain x will give you out your y value. And we're going to multiply that by delta x. So the other thing we need to know from this formula is delta x is our width. And it has the formula b, our upper bound, minus a, our lower bound, divided by n, our number of subintervals. There is a formula for x sub i star, um, but we're just going to figure it out based upon left or right. So really, to explain this in English, and not these math terms, is we have our width here. The change in x, or delta x, gives us our width, how wide something is. And x, f of x sub i star is going to be our height. So ultimately, we're going to use boxes to estimate area under a curve. We're going to look at a graph, we'll draw some boxes underneath and figure out what's the approximate area by taking the area of a box. Well, how do you find the area of a box or a square or rectangle? What you do its height times its width. So that's all we're doing here is a very fancy, complicated formula for saying we're going to take the area of a box by doing width times height, and we're going to add up all of our boxes together. So that's why this is a sum. We're going to add up all the areas of the boxes, and we know that the more subintervals we have, the better.